This is a release video for the newest version of Vapor that we're releasing today, version 3.9.0. Vapor comes with some new uh, features and enhancements that I'll be demonstrating in this video, such as a new renderer table, support for moving domains, new flow and lighting options, new third-party libraries, uh, relative session files so that you can more easily share your sessions with uh, colleagues, and also some new Python examples. So to get started, I'll go to my file menu and import some Worth ARW data. This is a Hurricane Katrina data set that has a moving domain, so we can uh, see how uh, these kind of data sets are now supported. So the first thing we'll notice is up in the top left, we have a new renderer table that allows us to more coherently organize the different renderers and the data sets that we brought into Vapor. I can click on a data set and look at different uh, metadata for that data set, including global attributes, variable metadata, and coordinate variable information. And I can also uh, more easily do things like stretch the z-axis, which is one of the first things you nearly always do when using Vapor. So I've selected my worth out data set. I'm going to stretch my z-axis by a factor of 50, so we have a better z-axis to show the three-dimensional data with. Now to create renderers, uh, in Vapor 3.9 we will click on this plus icon, and we'll see the familiar uh, renderer list come up. I'll double click on an image, and here's my image renderer. It's the same concept as before. Whenever you want to manipulate parameters for a given renderer, you just select that renderer that you've instantiated from this table. To turn it on, I'm going to click on this eyeball, and my image renderer appears. I'm going to go to my home viewpoint, zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to go to my geometry tab uh, like usual, and I'm going to try to move these uh, endpoints out to see more of my image uh, region. There we go. And you might be able to tell, sometimes it takes a few clicks, a bug that we will be fixing in a patch release, I'm sure. But now we have our image renderer that exceeds the uh, domain bounds, the domain bounds being shown by our white box. And what I can do next is create a volume renderer, just for demonstration purposes. Enable that. And now I can, uh, I might as well mess with the transfer function just a little bit so we can see through the data set. Almost there. That's something good enough for demonstration purposes of our moving domain. Now what I'll do is I'll play forward in time. And as the time series progresses, we should see the domain slowly moving forward as data gets loaded into memory. And now that the data is should be cached, it should go faster when I play it in reverse. One thing that I will note is that when you load multiple data sets into Vapor, each data set will be listed as a root uh, directory in the renderer table. So that if you load another WARF data set, it would show up below this one, and its renderers would show up below that data set. So uh, the next feature I'll talk about is the new uh, lighting for our flow renderer. I'll turn my volume renderer off, press the plus button, double click flow, and enable that. So in the past, by default, our uh, flow uh, integration lines, streamlines and path lines, didn't have three-dimensional uh, geometry applied to them. To do that, you would have to go to the appearance tab and enable the 3D geometry with this checkbox. And then you would get these cool looking tubes uh, now we have this lighting panel that allows you to adjust ambient lighting, diffuse lighting, specular lighting, and the shininess of the tubes. So if you're looking for a different aesthetic than the default, you can change those there. I will note that we've updated our third-party libraries in Vapor 3.9, so if you do find a bug, please report it at our GitHub repository, www.vapor, uh, no, it's GitHub dot ucar dot no github dot com slash incar slash vapor and if you do find a bug in vapor 3.9 please report it to us in our issues i want to give a shout out and a thank you to everyone who's reported bugs uh, between vapor 3.8 and 3.9 and also asked for new enhancements we hope we're getting to them in a timely manner and uh, it's very important that we get this information from you so that we can steer vapor in the right direction for your needs if we haven't gotten uh, to an enhancement or a new feature that you've requested. Trust me, we are uh, looking at things very uh, 
scrutinously for our next release. So hopefully if you have reported a new enhancement, we will get to it uh, between now and the end of the year. Another new feature that Vapor supports is a, uh, what we call a relative session file saving style. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but basically what you can do now is you can save sessions in Vapor. If I go to save session, and I can just call it, uh, let's see, in my demo, I'll say uh, test one. If this, uh, if I go back to that real quick, if I open that session, let's see. So this test one file, I'm not sure why these are all grayed out, but test one.vs3, as long as the data files that have been loaded into this session are in the same directory as this session file, you can um, send the session file as well as the data files to a colleague and they will be able to load your session file as if it was um, on their machine. In the past, our session files would store the, the paths to their data as absolute paths. So if I open up a terminal and I go, if I clear it out and I go, uh, just blow this up a little bit, the, the data files would be stored um, as such. So if I had a session file in this directory, if I look at, let's say, vi test onevs 3 and right now I'm looking at the raw XML for our test file. These are all uh, relative data paths. In the past, this would be an absolute path so that uh, unless your colleague's computer had an identical file system to what you were working on, Vapor would say, I can't find that data because that directory doesn't exist. But now the paths are all relative. So you can share uh, session files with colleagues as long as the data is in the same location as your session. Uh, we've also, let's see, added new uh, Python examples to our website. So if you go to our documentation page, and I think the best way to get there is just to Google uh, or just go to www.vapor.ucar.edu. Go to our documentation for the Vapor GUI. Our Python API reference now has um, not interactive, but rendered Jupyter Notebook examples. So if I click on, um, let's see, flow example, you can see these Jupyter Notebooks that spell out Python scripts and um, kind of spit out the, uh, the printouts and the renderings from the Python scripts that come as example files with the Python API. So if I, if I, if I go to um, the terminal again and I do a conda in the list, I have all these different conda environments. Um, if I go to this environment, uh, conda activate using, and I cd into conda prefix, which is the prefix for um, my, my environment uh, that I'm calling easing right now. I do an ls, and then I cd into lib python 3.9 vapor, oh, site packages, vapor. These are the uh, examples in the example notebooks that come bundled with Vapor. If I go to, um, let's see, just I'll see the into examples. The flow example.py, this Python script that comes with Vapor when you install it through Conda is now rendered in our documentation. So um, hopefully that makes it easier for you guys to find. With all that being said, I think one thing I'll do is run through a quick Python example of uh, keyframing, which is um, the team has kind of been messing around with using the Python API to move the camera through space during an animation. So I'm going to share a script that we have that uses easing functions that uh, can traverse a camera position from one place to another. And so to do that, I'm first going to pick a perspective that I want to start at, and then I want to save a session and I called that one test1.vs3. And now I'm gonna come over here and pick a different perspective that I'm gonna end at and save a session as test2. Next, let's see, I will cd into my example or my demonstration directory. And I have this script 
this Python or uh, Jupyter notebook called easing.ipymb. And in the video, I'll attach the easing.python script that you guys can use to do the same thing that I'm doing right now, just in Python. So to launch this, I will uh, do a Jupyter notebook to spin things up. And then I will double click on easing.ipymb. And since I've run this before, let's restart the kernel and clear all outputs. All right, let's get the right path. I think it was 3.9.0.demo. And the file was test2. This is the endpoint. So uh, as the comment says, that we're acquiring the camera settings from a secondary session file. My secondary session file is test2. And my primary uh, initial file is test1.vs3. So basically what we're doing here is we're loading a session file and getting the camera, uh, the camera from the session. We're going to acquire the direction of the camera, the direction the camera is looking, the position of the camera, and the up direction. Those three components define how a camera is oriented in 3D space. We're going to acquire uh, the initial uh, uh, direction, position, and up vector and then the secondary direction, position, and up vector. So I'll run this cell as we load vapor. A benign warning occurs. And here we are acquiring the initial camera position. And I'll say real quick, um, I'm using this module called easing functions, as well as NumPy to do this. So if you're going to do this, not only will you need the vapor module installed in your Conda environment, you'll need easing functions, which is actually, um, the module is called easing dash functions, not easing underscore functions. So once you uh, do a Conda, Conda install easing functions, you'll be able to use the easing underscore functions. I know it's confusing. But let's see, we've acquired the initial session, acquire the secondary session, and then just go through some initialization. And then what easing functions are, let's see, I should bring the website up. It's basically an interpolation scheme. Um, there's all sorts of different easing functions that come with the module. I believe I'm using the sign, ease in sign function, but you can also do linear interpolation if you like. Uh, I'm just using easing functions for demonstration purposes. So we've initialized uh, some arrays, and now we are going to create easing functions, circular ease in, for um, our position, direction, and up vector. Next, we're going to sample those easing functions a uh, hundred times between a linear space between 0 and 1. And then we're generating uh, lists of interpolations between um, the start and the end point using our easing function for x, y, and z for our up, down, and position. And then go through and interpolate. Whoops. Did I? That's the wrong path, but it should be OK. As long as I go to this path, I should be able to open these issues, as long as this error doesn't stop me. Hopefully, it's benign. But I'm going to go to Finder. Let's see. Go to at pesk, where I mistakenly saved my files, but that should be all right. Let's see. Go to my images. Oh, they're all intermingled. I'm going to run that step again in a, well, I can, I can just sort them. Let's see. Uh, sort by date, created, and here are my 100 screenshots using my easing function. Oh. Uh, let's view this as a list. Make it easier. Ah. Modified, there we go. Load all these. Yes, I do want to open them. And of course, you would use these images to create a uh, video using something like FFmpeg. Um, 
let's see, I'll just scroll through these, but this is how you can basically get camera motion using an easing function between two points that you have saved as session files. So I'll attach that script to this video, hopefully it's useful, and we should probably add it to our Python examples in the future, um, but for now it'll just be in the video. So uh, thank you again to everyone who has been supportive of us in the past and reported bugs and enhancements, and we hope to see you again for uh, Vapor 3.10. Have a good day.